Today we have another speed reviews session where basically I try and quickly review as many products as I can. <laughs> <laughs> products that I have been thoroughly testing and want to update you guys on. The category today is all of the items that I picked up during the most recent Sephora sale, minus the hair products. I haven't tested the hair products, but oh my gosh, you guys, I went absolutely bazonkers during the Sephora sale. I have over 30 items to talk about. Um, I should get straight into it, right? This is not my first time doing speed reviews. I've been doing them for the last few months, but for some reason, the last one that I did a few weeks ago, you guys really really love so hopefully the excitement is up for these speed reviews <sighs> okay let's get into it we got a lot to talk about so the first item that we have is the Smashbox Photo Finish Revitalize 8-in-1 Primer Essence. I picked this up on a whim. I hadn't heard anything about it, and this is terrible. <laughs> it's a travel size, so they do sell this in a bigger size, but it just smells so bad, and I feel like it doesn't do anything on my skin. Maybe it's doing something that I'm not noticing, but honestly, I cannot get over the smell of it. It's just not good smelling. It is a spray format. I thought it was going to be like a lotion-y type product that you apply. It's supposed to, I don't know, do a lot of things for your skin, but yeah, it, it smells too bad for me to suffer through. I don't know. <laughs> Next up, I have the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. I think that this is really nice. I think you can apply too much of it to where it will kind of show your pores and not look as good and look a little thick on the skin. But if you do a light layer, it is a very nice tinted moisturizer. I have liked this a lot. I use it a lot. I think it's nice. But I also did pick up the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Nude Glow. And and I actually ended up liking the IT Cosmetics a little better. I feel like it looked a little better over my pores and texture and overall my skin looked a little smoother with this. But I liked both. But I did do a side-by-side -side wear test on my channel versus these two. And while I did really like the Rare Beauty, I realized I did end up liking the IT Cosmetics more when I did them side-by-side. -side. Both are great. But I do recommend the It Cosmetics a little more. I will say the finish of the It Cosmetics, I don't want to say it's metallic, but it, the finish is more metallic than the Rare Beauty, but it sits prettier on the skin. I don't know. If I had to compare, It Cosmetics is better, but they both are very similar and very good tinted moisturizers. I have the split face on, as you saw in the demos, and both sides of my face look great. <laughs> I picked up one concealer. Well, I also picked up the NARS concealer, but you guys know I love that. That's such an old one, so I didn't feel the need to update you guys on that one. But I got the Dior Backstage Concealer. I have been using this nonstop since it's the only concealer I've had to test. And I do really like this concealer. It's very solid. It gives about a medium coverage. It's not going to give you to full. I think it wears decent. It's not one of my all-time favorite concealers. I don't feel like it smooths out the under eye enough, but it does the job that it's supposed to do of concealing. I think it's quite natural. So while this isn't my favorite concealer, I definitely have enjoyed using it pretty much every day, but there are better concealers out there in my opinion. I'm four products in and I'm already getting breathless. <sighs> Let's travel over to setting powders. So the first one that I have is the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting setting powder and it's just a translucent powder. I really love this. This is kind of like a no powder powder. It's very lightweight on the skin. I think, you know, when I'm wearing natural makeup, I love to set my makeup with this. When I get into more of a full coverage look, I don't like this powder as much, but for an everyday natural powder, no powder powder, <laughs> I have been really enjoying this or using it for touch-ups. It's been really great as well. I think this is a very, very nice natural lightweight setting powder so I do recommend it but like I said when I'm wearing full coverage most of the time I want something a little heavier duty than this but for every day it's been great I also picked up the correct shade because I did have this in the past but the shade was so orange and deep on me this is the one size turn up the base versatile foundation powder love this foundation powder. I love setting with it so even today when I used it to set my skin I feel like it instantly blurred the porous areas on my skin. I've also used this on its own as well. It is a beautiful powder foundation. For the Miami Heat, I actually have been enjoying a powder foundation. So I'll use a regular liquid concealer and then I'll use this all over my face with a big fat kabuki brush as my powder foundation. And I just feel like my skin looks good no matter how much I sweat. So this has been really great. Highly recommend this. Moving into bronzers, we'll start off with this amazing cream bronzer that I am late 
the game too. This is the Sai, I believe is how you say it, S-A-I-E. Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in Light Bronze. This is so beautiful, you guys. I love the tone of it. I love how it blends out. It reminds me a lot of the Chanel bronzer. It's not quite cream to powder like the Chanel, but the color is what I'm talking about. I just think overall, it is a phenomenal bronzer. It blends beautifully into the skin with ease. I prefer to use it with a sponge, but it works great applied as a brush too. Love the color of this. Highly, highly, highly recommend this if you're on the market for a cream bronzer. It's so good. You will hear more about this. I also could not help myself. I ended up picking up the Fenty Sunstalker Face and Eye Bronzer Highlight Palette. And honestly, I have been enjoying this. I don't necessarily recommend this to everybody. I don't think everybody needs this, but it's been quite nice to be able to mix my bronzers. I don't really get into the deep shades too much. I have used this palette a couple of times for my eye makeup and it has been great for that. So if you think this is a palette that you will not only use for the face, because if you're only using Using it for the face you're not going to dig into all the bronzers but if you think you'll use it for the eyes as well it might be worth your while they blend beautifully on the eyelids the highlights are pretty nice as well I mean I've enjoyed my time with this palette I still don't think it's necessary but if you feel as though you're going to use it I think you will enjoy it we also have the one size made for shade bronze and sculpt trio they launched a lot of stuff I feel like I'm talking about a lot of one size stuff but there are three different shades in here wow these run very deep the light I even feel like is too dark for me. They are quite pigmented. They blend beautifully. They aren't going to be my favorite bronzer formulation. They have too much power to them. <laughs> it's too intense and I don't feel like the shades differentiate enough on the face to really justify having three different pans. When you swatch it, you can totally tell the difference, but I just feel like they all pull so dark on my skin and I can't really tell a difference. But the formula itself is really beautiful, really buttery, very blendable. So I like this, but I don't love it, if that makes sense. Also, from one size, I have the Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio. I ended up picking up the shade Very That. I think that this is a really beautiful product. So you have a cream blush, a powder blush, and then kind of a shimmery blush topper. I love all of the options that you have. The cream blush is very easy to blend out. The powder blush is nice, soft, and beautiful, just like the bronzers. And I do think having this blush topper is a nice touch. I tried it as a highlight. It's definitely too deep for me as a highlight, but if I do wanna get a little extra shimmer on my cheek, I really like these. I like the versatility that is in this blush trio. So I've been enjoying this. Okay, the amount of blushes in this video, it's, it's honestly ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what came over me, but so many blushes to talk about. We have the Item Beauty Blushin' Light Cream Blush in the shade It's Verified. Never thought I'd buy an item from this brand, but... Oh my gosh, I love this, you guys. This is almost like a cream to powder kind of finish, and it's beautiful. I applied it with a beauty blender. It applied so evenly. It lasts a long time because I feel like it has that cream to powder type of finish. If I didn't have the blush collection that I do, I definitely would have picked this up in other colors. I love how even this applies to the cheek as well. This is really great and Item Beauty is one of the more affordable brands at Sephora. So definitely check this out, especially if you have oily skin, but you still want to indulge in cream blushes. This is great. I picked up this formula to try. They actually ended up sending me a bunch of shades over. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. I chose the shade Southbound. It is on this side of my cheek. It's okay. I like it, but I recommend it more so for natural days, like when you're wearing a tinted moisturizer because you're not getting too much coverage from this. And I feel like if you try and layer it on more and more, it begins to look a little patchy. So this is truly for a very natural makeup day. It's quite sheer. It's very pretty if you do a light layer of it, but if you build it up a little too much, I built it up a little too much today, it does get a little patchy. So it's not a perfect product, but I do think it's going to mesh very well with tinted moisturizers and give you the very soft, natural, rosy glow to the cheek. So it depends on the type of makeup wearer that you are. Again, I like it. I don't love it. I picked up actually three shades of the Huda Beauty Cheeky Tints. One came broken, so I just ended up returning it. The shades that I do have are... 
Proud Pink and Perky Peach. I love the finish of these. I just wish they had a wee bit more pigment. I feel like they fade off the cheek really quickly and I just have to keep building and building and it's just too much work. I wish they had a little bit more pigment because the finish of these are so pretty. I love the glow that these have, but they just disappear too fast. They're a little bit too sheer. They're not the best cream blush formula. And on the contrary, very opposite of the Huda product. I have the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the shade Grace. I love, love, love the shade of this. It has a little purple in it. It's very intense in general, but this shade is even more intense. So I literally need the most minuscule amount of product, but I feel like this blush shade is quite unique. So I am very happy that I have it in my collection. There's most definitely a learning curve to this product, but once you have it figured out, you will love this product. It is a great liquid blush, but dang, she pigmented. <laughs> This caught my eye. This was an impulse purchase, and part of the reason why I don't like it is my own mistake. But this is the Ilia Multi Stick Face Palette. At the time of purchasing this, I didn't realize this was the Ilia Multi Stick formula in a palette. I do not like the Ilia Multi Stick formula. So that is my mistake, but. I'm not a fan of this palette, so if you were eyeing it and you feel the same way about the multi six as I do, hopefully I was able to warn you in time. But this palette looks beautiful, right? I mean, I saw it, I was instantly attracted to it, but it's so sheer, you guys. I cannot get these to show up on me. They're a little bit, I wouldn't say they're not creamy. They are creamy, but they are a little harder to blend out compared to some other cream formulas that I've dealt with. The highlight in here is very, very subtle. I'm not a fan of cream highlight really to begin with. There's like one or two shades in here that have a little bit of pigment, but to me, it's just not worth the effort. I don't even like the way that these look on the lips either. So for me, this was a dud, but again, it's on me. I, sh I should have done more research. And the last cream blush, well, it's absolutely ridiculous, but I did pick up the other shade of the Danessa Myricks Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette in the shade Dewy Undercover. I was not aware that this would actually work for my skin tone. I didn't pick this up at first because it just didn't look like it was gonna work for me, but in all reality, it's just a different tone. You know, the other palette was bright and juicy and sunshiny. This one is a little bit more neutral. Love, love, love this. This gives such a youthful look to the cheek. And surprisingly, the colors do work on me. They look really neutral and pretty. This one right here is my favorite with purple looks. This one I can't get away with as much, but the first three are so beautiful for neutral looks. And I think this is such a nice formula. I love this on the lips in particular, but these are also so beautiful on the cheeks. They do take a little bit of extra time to work out, but once they are worked out, stunning. Okay. Powder blushes. We only have two. Impulse purchase would not have picked this up if it wasn't on a discount, but I picked up the new Tom Ford Sheer Cheek Duo in the shade Eclat New. I do have the bottom peachy pink on my cheek. I think that this formula is really beautiful. For $80, I don't know that this is worth it, <laughs> but it is a very beautiful formula. I cannot say anything negative about either of these. This shade looks kind of boring, but on the cheeks, it looks really nice. This gives a nice sheen to the cheek, but it's not unflattering if you have any texture or anything. It's a beautiful formula, but I'm happy I got it on sale. The last powder blush, oh my god, I won't shut the heck up about these blushes, <laughs> but I only ended up picking up one of the Laura Mercier Blush Color Infusions in the shade Ginger. It is now my tradition to pick up one shade every sale, so this time it was Ginger. This does not swatch well. You really can't see it on my hand, but it is the most beautiful, neutral, everyday blush. Really soft. This is one of my all-time favorite, favorite powder blush formulas. I highly, highly recommend it. And I can't wait to pick up the next shade. These are great. These are everything you could want in a powder blush. The final cheek products that we have, I didn't pick these up during the Sephora event, but they did launch on the website during the Sephora event. And I thought I would update you on these anyways. So these are the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Multi Glows. I have both of the shades. I did pick up Dream Light, which is the darker one, knowing that it wouldn't work as well for me, but I think it's beautiful for the eyelids. And then I also, of course, have Romance Light, which is a little bit lighter. I absolutely 
love these. I think they are so versatile. I think you can get multiple colors with just this one highlight. I think they are so beautiful blended together. I think they look nice and blingy and pretty on the cheeks. I love the way that they look on the eyes. These are fantastic. I've been enjoying these a lot. Let's move on to the eyes now. We're going to get started with the eyebrows. I'm almost kind of excited to do this video so I can start using my normal brow products. This is not a bad product though. So I ended up picking up a set of the Refai eyebrow products. So there is a sculptor, a pomade, and a pencil in the kit. So I'm going to go through each product individually. I have a love-hate relationship with the brow sculptor. So you have a double sided brush on one side and then you can twist out the brow sculptor which is icky and gooey and leaves the eyebrows white you have to kind of brush it out which I don't like but this is one of the most amazing products to give yourself a feather brow I must say that it's a little messy it's not the easiest process but I have been wearing feather brows all month I don't necessarily love it, but I've been testing this product and all of the ins and outs for you guys. That's how I get this feather brow. If this is the look that you're into last all day, it's pretty darn incredible. I'm not going to lie, but there are some things I don't like about it. We also have in the kit the pomade. I don't really like this. It's really, really soft. So the way it works, you have the brush on one end and then you also have the pomade in this tiny little baby capsule. I just feel like that's not a lot of product. And this is so soft. I ended up like pulling half of the product out by accident. And it's a very messy pomade. If you are into brow pomades, I would suggest going the ABH route. Yeah, it's not bad. It's actually quite natural for being a pomade on the eyebrows. I don't dislike it, but I don't like the actual way that the product is made in terms of the component. Then finally from the kit, we do have the brow pencil and you are able to buy all of these products individually. I really do enjoy this brow pencil. I think that the tip is really, really fine. I'm able to get some true natural hair like strokes with this and I usually just use this to kind of line the underbrow and then fill in. Yeah, it's a really great brow pencil. I've enjoyed it. I would even consider buying it on its own uh, when I run out of that. Of this entire video, this is my most used product. I've used it 99.9% .9 of the time that I've done my makeup since purchasing this. This is from Makeup Forever. This is the Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bisque. It is, I mean, I'm familiar with the product. I have it in other colors, but I've got this skin tone one. You can use this as eyeliner. You can use it to clean up your lip line. I've been using it to clean up my underbrows, and it's stiff enough, I feel like, to where it holds its shape, but it's still quite quite easy to blend. This is the perfect shade for filling in the eyebrows. You can use it to highlight the face, whatever you want. It's such a versatile product. Lasts all day. Love it, love it, love it. Eyeliners. I did pick up the Melt Slick Waterline Eye Pencil. I'm not a fan of this. This is too slick for me. The best way to use it is the way that I used it today in the waterline and then blending it out into the shadow. I just think it moves way too much. It leaves like shadows and ugh, my eyes look messy at the end of the day. This doesn't really stay in place. Don't even bother trying to put it on the upper lash line. You'd think because it was slick you would like it, but no, you have absolutely no control. The eyeliner just goes everywhere. I personally don't really recommend this. You might like it if you only use it in the waterline, but even then I do find it to be a bit messy. I also have been loving this, surprisingly. Kind of picked this up without even thinking about it. Gucci, man. Gucci Beauty does things to me. They make me an animal. So I got the Gucci Beauty new liquid eyeliner. It's like a felt tip liner. This is such a beautiful formula. I love how the felt tip is nice and long. I feel like it's quite easy to get a wing. It doesn't beat my Tom Ford. I just want to let you guys know that. But it is quite black. It's very easy to apply. It doesn't run. It lasts a long time. I do think that this is a really, really great liquid liner highly recommend this okay i have five eyeshadow palettes to talk about all of these are in the rose family they all launch during the sale we'll start off with the one that i'm wearing right now this is the only one that did not get an individual review so many of you guys had asked for updates and what i thought so this is the nars summer unrated palette i am currently wearing this on the eyes now so my thing with this is it is a boring palette but it is a beautiful palette nars has launched palettes very very similar to this so this is nothing new to the brand 
brand. It's actually quite repetitive, but NARS did it well. It is a well done palette, so I can only sing my praises to it. You probably don't need it. There's nothing special about it, but dang, if the quality ain't good, and I have been enjoying using this palette. So right now I have this matte rose shade on the inner part of my crease, blends out beautifully. And then I have this brown right here in the outer corner. Once again, works out great, blends out nice and even. I mixed these two bottom browns and I used that to add the depth to my eye to get this neutral like pinky brown kind of look. I used a somewhat purpley shade down here in the center of my eye to add a little bit of attention to bleed into the brown beautifully and then I finished off the look with the lighter pink up here in the corner in the inner half of my eyelid I mean you're gonna get a basic look with this palette these are all basic colors but it's such a nice solid palette you have a lot of options I enjoy the different textures in here so I have had a very, very good experience with this palette. Nothing to write home about in terms of the color story, but quality, reliability, just loving every look that I get. It's an awesome palette. Also that Charlotte Tilbury launch that I was talking about that I didn't buy at Sephora, but this launched during the sale at Sephora. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams. This is one of my all time new favorite Charlotte Tilbury quads. I think the formulations in here are amazing. Her mattes are just when Charlotte Tilbury does her mattes good, they are amazing. I can't say anything bad about this palette. Yes, it's a rose palette, but the quality is some of the best shadows that Charlotte Tilbury has ever, ever come out with. So love that. Love that it's a simple quad. You guys know I have been loving the Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. I actually did do like a whole ranking all of these rose palettes in a separate video. So check that out if you want more in-depth thoughts. I'm just going to kind of cruise through this. The number one one best rose palette that has come out recently. This was number one. Yeah, I love it. Everything about it. It's great. The one that I don't really recommend, but I'll still continue to wear because I bought it. It's not bad enough to not use it. This is the Artist Couture Supreme Mobs. What a beautiful color story. It is even more beautiful in person than it looks online. The mattes are great. The shimmers not so much. I find them to be a little dry and messy. So that's why I'm not in love with this palette. So buy with caution. But I will say the colors, of course, are very, very pretty. Lastly, in terms of eyeshadow palettes, we have the Mount Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette. Again, all rose. I'm not a huge fan of this palette. In terms of quality... Great. So if you are liking what you are seeing with the color story, I encourage you to pick this up. It's nice. However, these run darker on the eyes, at least on me, than they look in the pan. And it's just overall too deep of a palette for my preferences. So I'm not as big of a fan of the color story, but quality is great. And the final category we have to go through is lips. I don't have very many. I have so much lip products that I just... I'm not that tempted to buy them anymore. It doesn't stop me in any other category, but the lips I've kind of like, <sighs> I could take a step back. <laughs> so I picked this up because I thought it looked so pretty in store. This is the Dior Lip Glow Color Reviver Balm in the shade Rose Gold. I thought that that would be so pretty, but honestly, I'm not a fan of how this looks on the lips because it's that metallic finish because, because there are glitters in this. It kind of emphasizes the dryness of my lips. I like this over another lipstick or something underneath, but on my bare lips, it's not flattering because of the glitters. So that kind of defeats the purpose. I just don't like the way it looks on my lips that much. But again, if I'm wearing a matte lipstick and I put that on top, really pretty. The rose gold, you'll see it, but on the bare lips, it's not as flattering. And then this is awesome. First of all, the packaging. I mean, Gucci Beauty does it again. This is a liquid lipstick in the shade Cornelia Pink. If I didn't have so many lip products, I definitely would have gotten other colors of this. It's not full pigment. It almost has kind of like a blur effect to it, which I think is going to be really great if you have more mature skin. Love this color. It's quite comfortable. I mean, it's not hydrating. It's a liquid lipstick, but it feels really lightweight on the lips and it doesn't get crunchy or when you layer it, it doesn't get hard and uncomfortable. So I think that this is a beautiful liquid lipstick formula. It's a little different because it has kind of like that velvet blur finish to it. It's not quite so opaque, but 
It's a beautifully comfortable liquid lipstick. It's not that drying. And if you put a lipstick on or a lip gloss, you're good to go in terms of comfort, but it lasts a good amount of time. And it just, it feels like nothing on the lips because it's so thin. So I definitely recommend these liquid lipsticks. And then the last item that I have is a perfume that I got, or this is a perfume oil. This is the Nest Seville Orange Perfume Oil. I have been loving this. Oh, it's so good and it lasts a decent amount of time. I wouldn't say it's like super long lasting, but it's enough for me and I love the way that this smells. If you like the citrusy, orangey kind of scents, I think you will really, really enjoy this. I always say this, but I have the scent palette of a 13 year old. Candy, sweet, dessert, give it to me. That's what I like to smell like. So citrus isn't an area that I go into very often, but this is really, really nice. So I'm happy about that. Happy that I picked that up. Would I buy it in a full size after I ran out? Maybe. I'm not 100% sold. I'm happy with what I have right now and will definitely continue to use it. So there we have it. That is my speed review of the crazy amount of items I picked up during the Sephora sale. Some hits, some misses, a lot of average products as well. I hope that this speed review was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. I guess have a good one.